All right, everybody, everybody, welcome back. My name is Lou Lombardi, a.k.a. Ludini, and it is another Ludini's Super Secret Musician's Mastermind, Ludini Rock and Roll Circus Mastermind, Musician's Mastermind call. Uh, we do these uh, once a week. If you'd like more information on how you can participate uh, in our mastermind calls, if you're a musician, you're interested in learning more about uh, music marketing, growing your audience, uh, we cover even cover topics like, uh, you know, uh, being an efficient songwriter and uh, best ways to record and how to get things done uh, in the electronic age. Uh, you can reach out to us at Ludini Rock and Roll Circus dot com. That is our uh, podcast hub. And if that's not fast enough for you, just shoot me an email at Lou at Lou Lombardi Music dot com. And me or Carrie uh, will uh, get in touch with you and uh, get you all set up on how to get on one of these fantastic calls. We have our own private Facebook group where we're posting ideas and concepts throughout the week and talking about them. And you can post uh, different things that you're doing and we can give you feedback. So mm -hmm. uh, the quickest way is probably just to email me at Lou at Lou Lombardi Music dot com and our website is ludini rock and roll circus dot com. So we've got Carrie JK with us today and we've got uh, Joe Freeman as well. Um, uh, my name is Lou Lombardi. I'm the host of the Ludini Rock and Roll Circus. Been a musician for a long time. Carrie, give like a two, three sentence bio. <laughs> two, three sentence bio. Uh, I think musician and misfit is what I usually say, so I'll stick with that. You're a musician and a misfit. Okay, mm -hmm. and uh, we got Joe Freeman. So, Joe, what, what what's your story? Yeah, so um, I started off in commercial print a long time ago and um, graphic design. And I got into really advanced stuff like uh, web to print and cross media campaigns. Found Russell Brunson, realized what I was doing in a daytime job could become a full-time business, stopped. And now I help people market um, their services. Right now I'm focusing on creatives. So I'm focusing on authors, musicians, um, people like that because, you know, when I was a kid, I loved to draw and stuff like that. So that's where my heart's at. So that's where I'm focusing. Excellent. Okay. Um, last week we had a discussion. <clears throat> we started a, like a two part discussion about uh, how to make money when everything is free. And this is a lot of, uh, this is a trap that I think a lot of musicians fall into because it's, you find yourself just giving everything away or giving nothing away and wondering why you can't grow an audience. So it's like, you know, nobody, people are having trouble, you know, finding this path from free to, but I, you still need to make money. We still need to keep the lights on. I still need to be able to buy gear. You still need to be able to hire people like Joe to, you know, help you market. So how do you get, how do we go from, okay, you know, we've figured it out that we got to do some stuff for free to bring people in. We've got to have those lead magnet ideas. We've, we've got to. You know, do the you know maybe we're doing the free download or the free ebook or whatever. So we've got we're 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 getting them we're getting some people in to the point now we have to get them excited enough that they lay down money. Okay, <laughs> so um, Carrie has uh, you know you know been doing some research on this stuff. I know you sent me and I'd like to talk about that link you sent me as well. Carrie earlier this week um, it, it's on point because I think that plays into it but uh, I know you were as we were talking before we got the call started uh, you said you had some thoughts on this so okay, you, you well, here's, go ahead and get get into that to um, like the immediate thing that I've got here two principles that I've sort of gathered over time now one of the things my cards on the table here I am no business expert anyone who comes to me for marketing advice is is jump, jumping up the wrong tree but um, I have been doing this for a long time and I've seen I've seen it done well and I've seen it done badly. And one of the principles that's come up when it comes to how, how to actually price these things, and someone like Joe will be able to tell me how well this squares with the proper way of doing it, is there's two uh, competing forces that really come against anything creative that I've done when it comes to actually selling it. Now, one of those is what people are willing and able to pay. Um, it's no good demanding more money than is in the world. And um, later on, we'll break that and we'll break that down into things like how much you charge when you play live or how much you charge for a thing. Um, at the other end, it's got to be uh, an attractive deal for the person on the other end. But then the other, so that's a force that might bring it downwards. But the force that's going to bring it back up again is perceived value. Yeah. And that's that if um, you charge too little or you give it too low of a price tag, 
And this also comes into what we've done with um, like what my wife does with jewellery. If you if you aim to, if you fire too low, then instinctively what people are going to do is going to think, well, that's all it's worth then. And when I've been out as well, and when I've sold my music too cheap in the past, or when people have been around sold music too cheap, it immediately leads to worse gigs, worse engagement because nobody has any investments in it. So, so when 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 we talked before last time about busking theory. And when a busking mentor told me that when you let people pay you money at the end of it, you're actually doing them a favour. Because it means now they can go away feeling like they've, uh, they, they've, they've given something back without having to clap really hard, without having to become your best mate, without having to do anything that's going to put them out. They've had a good time, they've paid you for it, and they can go away feeling like they've made a good deal. It's like at the, uh, and Joe, you've, I'm sure you've seen this around here at the grocery stores, when you do go through the automatic checkouts now and they usually start this in the fall once they once your total comes up it says would you like to make a donation and there's always <laughs> some charity and it's a way i always thought it was like it's a way for people to go like feel like they did something good without <laughs> like really having to get like too involved in it so it's like easy to start throw a dollar two dollars or five dollars whatever at it so i think this this is kind of a similar similar concept you know people go like yeah that, that was cool i don't want to get too wrapped up to it but i did enjoy it so here's whatever is that the kind of how you're thinking about it carrie yeah okay so it's, it's always it's and and and, the, and there's um amanda amanda palmer's way of putting it and i think she made this one of her headings that she arrived at at the end of one of her chapters was um don't make people pay, let them pay. I guess in practice, you are actually making them pay. You're just not showing them how the sausage is made. Right. <laughs> so a lot of times, um, just rewrapping up some of the things you guys are saying, um, when you're building a marketing campaign in the beginning, like someone's coming from somewhere that they're getting free content. And so that's the free part, right? So that's mm -hmm. what you guys caught, talked about last week. Right. And, um, you know, you're building value, you're building a relationship with them, you're building no like and trust. So maybe they're getting one song of your of your CD, or maybe they're um, getting value, like one article that's teaching them how to do one little thing that's going to improve their life. But it's, it's going to give them a little bit of the next step and make them feel like they're making progress. But it's not going to give them the full answer. It's not going to really change their life on a long term. Mm -hmm. So then when they go into your landing page, into your funnel, you're, you're selling them the next thing. You're reinforcing that and you're providing them additional value. So in your case, maybe it's the fold CD. Maybe um, if you're someone like um, Lou and I have been researching Leah quite heavily. Um, if you're someone like her, then, um, you know, you may add additional value on top of that. So she may sell you a CD, but she's also selling you a dragon bracelet or something to go with that. And then that's allowing that person to say, okay, I really love Leah's music, but um, I want, and I want to support her and I would really love to wear this bracelet and um, show that I'm part of her, part of her fan base. So then they feel good. They feel like they're part of something. They become part of her community and then being part of her community makes them feel even better because now they're part of, part of something bigger than themselves. And if you can build that, like, so in her case, hers is music and fantasy. And in her case, that community, they're feeling better. They're feeling like they're in a place of, of fantasy, a place they like to be, a place they dream of, a place they're interested in. But let's take it a different angle. There's another guy that um, Lou posted a video of the other day. He takes a different angle. Okay, so instead of you coming in and you becoming part of a scene, part of a, a community, part of a fantasy, part of a world that's different than your day-to-day -day world, this gentleman's selling um, learning guitar to a larger level. So becoming more of an expert, becoming pretty much the guitar intellectual instead of just a guitar player. So he takes a different approach and there's all kinds of approaches to doing that. But ultimately you're trying to give value, a, a lot of value in exchange for money because 
what is money? Money is nothing more than a device that allows us to get what we want, whether that's a necessity or a desire. If it's a necessity, someone's going to put out money today. They're going to be like, okay, I need it. It's a no brainer. Here's my money. Take it. If it's a desire or it's just something we like, then it's it depending on your cash flow, that's a harder decision to make. Yeah. So you've got to build up that value and really build up that community of people who know, like, trust, and really want to be with you. Like in my mind, I'm not a musician. Let me say that first off. If if I try to play anything, I you don't want to hear any of that. <laughs> so <laughs> but in my mind, like you want to ultimately, if you were to go somewhere and play your music, you want to have an audience that's going to follow you there because they just love you. They love hanging out with you. They love hearing your music. They love being in that crowd. It's all about the community. At that point, I'm going to pass it back over to you guys because that's really how I feel with all the research I've been doing. Um, and I'd love to hear your opinion on what I just said. Um I think I think that there is uh, a lot to the idea of um, community, and I think there's something interesting. That Joe and I were talking on Monday, Carrie, and I think I threw this at you, like yeah. right afterwards. Um, <laughs> and we could get into this a little bit. As yeah, part it went of a bit in a crazy direction that chat, but I'm but never yeah, but but he had no, well, <laughs> he, Joe, Joe, as because Joe is not a musician, he saw something I think with what Leah is doing. Mm. Um, that is something that I think as a musician, we're not saying we're looking at it from the musical aspect of it, mm. but <clears throat> I'm not so sure that people are even that I don't so sure that it's necessary for people to come to you strictly out of the music. Mm. And what she is doing is she is capitalizing on this whole game of Thrones, Lord of the Rings craze that's out there. And she is putting herself in that space as somebody who is providing a Lord of the Rings, Game of Thrones, Vikings, you know, experience that mm. you can be a part of. And part of that has to do that she just happens to be a musician. So bringing people in that world, bringing people into that world has to do. You know, it's it's focused around her being a musician, but it's more about that world. And if yeah. you follow her Facebook page and stuff like that, she encourages people to share, you know, photos of castles and, and things like that where, you know, and, and it's not really even anything about music. And so I, I don't know. I have not polled her fans, so I can't say for sure. But I would suspect that there's probably a good number of people there that maybe don't even know all that much what Celtic folk metal is but are really into the game of thrones etc stuff so they are being attracted to it by that and seeing it as a community of people who are kind of um into that and music can be can be a very powerful thing for that because music is a soundtrack to everything music is the soundtrack to you know if you if you work at a job you know i have a i have a brick and mortar business and you go out in the shop and the guys are blasting music so there's mu you know we have music I have music I play music in my office. <clears throat> music is if you're driving you know like mm -hmm. uh, Joe I don't know how much like outside sales you do or you have to drive places to have meetings with people you're listening to music as you're you know more likely you're listening to some music in the car. Um, people you know there's music to all those films that we the, you know that Game of Thrones and all that stuff. There's music to all of that. So music is like the soundtrack to everything. And it really adds a lot to that experience. You wouldn't go see you know very very few movies do anything without having a good musical score. So um, that's the way our lives are. So we, we, we gravitate toward this. She, so what she's doing is kind of creating the soundtrack to this sort of like game of Thrones, Lord of the Rings, whatever kind of experience um, as opposed to saying, Oh, I make this really cool music and, you know, you know, bring people in and just kind of like offhandedly mentioning that she's really going for the throat on that whole thing. So, what do you think, Carrie? Like, I mean, there's right. different ways. Look, I mean, it's, it's it has to. We've talked. We talked in the past about it, like in you, about bringing in your entire life experience and making that like part of your niche. So it's not just you know the music. Let's talk, you play. About, what, let's so, talk about what Leah doesn't do and why it actually works in her favor. 
And what Leah doesn't do is tour. She doesn't go out and play live. She doesn't play festivals. She's met, she's talked about this. Right. It's something she'd like to do it. She says it's something she'd like to do in the future. But at this, at this time of day, she's built up her whole thing without ever setting foot on a live stage. And she talks about this. And, so, and she also, the other thing that she said is um, that she's a stay-at-home mom of however many kids. And um, when she started out, she thought this was going to work against her. But then she found out the opposite. She found by telling the story that way, it actually brought people in. Now, this means then that there are other Celtic metal bands, particularly operating out of Scandinavia, who do play festivals, who do tour the world. Right. And when you become a fan of those, you are becoming a, you are becoming part of a scene that involves going out and doing something. It involves leaving your house. It involves going and mixing with other fans of that. It involves dressing a certain way. It involves all these sorts of things about um, about uh, conforming to a fandom um, that is a cultural thing. Leah doesn't ask people to do any of that. And um, what I compared this to, um, because I know the people who will buy um, this, and the other thing that they buy, when you go to the Marlers, you'll have it there, um, there'll be stalls set out around the side, side where people will have like plaster dragons, holograms, dragon's eggs. Um, and I don't know what the equivalent price will be there, maybe 50 to to $100 for one of these things. And people will put it around their house and it gives them a lifestyle and identity without them having to ever do anything except decorate their house. Mm -hmm. And that is what Leah's tapped into. Because, like, um, you've got the plaster dragon, you've got the picture of a fantasy landscape, fantasy art, shelf full of Leah CDs. And that now has you in that world there. And, and another thing as well, that is, that fantasy world is a different world to, while the live experience might tap into this. And I was a goth for a very long time. I went around, went to those festivals and... Um, and, and I've seen that, and I loved it. But also, you want to be able to vanish into that world sometimes. That sort of um, that 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 sort of um, willing escape is part of a, a fandom as well. And the other, and the reason why the other reason why Leah found that being a stay at home mom, being open about that, helped her. I bet you a dollar to donuts that a large percentage of her fans are also stay at home moms. If, yeah, those are their. This is their fantasy. To, like they're like yeah. living vicariously, kind of through her. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, those, um, are the, those are the people who can't go to the festivals and mm. want to go to the festivals. You know what I mean? They see her having success. They want to go to those festivals. Mm. They want to hear that music. They identify with the fact that they're a stay at home mom um, and they love her music. So they listen to it. They buy it. They put it mm. around their home and do exactly what you just said. Mm. And her starting off um, that way, starting off, not doing festivals, starting off, not doing events. Let me ask you guys a question. Um, if she decided to, to do events next year, um, how easy would it be for her to get people to that event versus getting people to the event the day she started? Like now um, she, she has an audience. The problem is the that it's not an audience that's used to going out to live events. So depending on how she marketed it, she might be able to mobilize them to show up and see her and they might make it the only concert they ever go to. <laughs> but but she could but but you certainly couldn't take it for granted she couldn't um however what you could do is approach promoters and say look i've got this large fan base here and it's real i, right. is, I think that, I, think that I, I would just to answer my opinion on it uh joe is that she's got a way better chance of people turning out for a show mm -hmm. than she would have if she would have started out playing live Right. I think she's a better chance. I, that doesn't necessarily mean. I think Carrie's making a really good point that like there is a lot of times that people fall. It's just like there are people who will listen to your music on Spotify and they might really like you, but they'll never buy a thing. They they right. really enjoy the music. I there's tons of artists that I love and listen to. I never bought ever bought in my life bought one thing of theirs. Okay, so you're going to have. That it's the same thing, and it's the same way with people going out to shows. There's people that are gonna, and then there's gonna be people that are like, they won't do anything un except go out to a show. They're not really interested in your dragons and your artwork and stuff like that. They, the, what they want to do is they want to go hear live music. That's a different, that's a well, different crowd. That's a different audience. Um, and then, and then there are the people that are, I think, what is Lee, what we've all described as Lee's core audience that. You know, these people that like want to, you know, have this sort of, you know, um, 
medieval kind of like vibe in their life. Mm. And so Le- Le- Leah is part of, probably not just Leah either, you know, Nightwish and a lot of these other bands <clears throat> that bring that vibe, you know, they're, they're into that whole scene. Um, and some of those people will go to, sh- and there's a lot of bands, same thing with me. I'm a musician. I love live music. And there's tons of bands that I, I absolutely adore and I have bought records, but I've never gone to see them live. So, it's not a guarantee, but I think that you are, you, if you had to hedge a bet, you're doing better by building something mm. first well, before well, go just like trying to mm. launch it. Unless you are 22 years old and you're totally fine sleeping in a van with your buddies <laughs> and running all around the countryside, you know, then you can build it that way. And there's a lot of bands that still yeah. build things. Um, that way in fact it's becoming kind of a unique thing because everybody wants to do everything online so the idea of getting out there and getting sweaty in front of an audience is in some ways is kind of a novelty um, you know well, in, in certain uh, niches well, well I will say is and there's, and there's still something I know as well is um, the only problem she has with that is at some point she's got to learn to do it well and playing in front of an audience is different <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's totally. an art in itself, and yeah, and if you haven't paid your dues doing it, it's going to take a while to get to the point where you can do it really well, yeah, and we, people if, will be expecting. Well, it. I, However, I, go ahead. what um, what Leah will do, and I know this because um, how she operates with everything, she will surround herself with the people that will make it value for money, and that means that she will work with a production designer who will give her a good, who will who will make it a proper experience in there. It won't be the same as just a band in the corner of a pub somewhere. It will be a proper show. So she will want to work with a director. She will want to work with a set designer. Well, that's the thing, too. She has financial. She has she has built in financial backing now, which a lot Mm. of bands who want to go out on the road, like I said, you know, they're they're sleeping on pool tables or in the van or whatever. And she could launch something that, you know, that would be pretty cool to go see right out of the gate and have some financial backing behind it um and if she works the numbers right and depending where she plays too i would imagine if she toured um the east coast or the west coast of of america she would probably play small clubs if she went to europe scandinavia you know different places like that maybe even brazil and japan she would probably be very quickly be playing like bigger festivals and, and, and things like that because the scenes over there are different in terms of what um you know, there's a bigger scene for those like there's that, a that lot, thing. lot there is also a lot of competition she will have to show yeah. that she can do it but i tell you what carrie i'm running into people all the time that like that that don't do like are like total nobodies mm-hmm. and they've got they've got they're on they're on festivals now the the thing with this the, the thick kicker with those festivals is before anybody gets any illusions is like a buddy of mine told me he's like they're great you play in front of thousands of people but if you are like a band like you know uh rhapsody of fire one of these bands that isn't like famous then most of the people there don't you know, aren't even paying attention to you <laughs> <laughs> but you do get that cred of playing that festival. And that's if you... also one of the things that you learn from doing it is how to get those people who aren't paying yeah. attention. You yeah. Pay yeah. Attention but you to. get that cred and you can build on that because now you've got all kinds of photos to throw up all over your social media. Look at the thousands of people that turned out to see us, you know, and you can, you can leverage that. And then, you know, next time around more people are going to know who you are and be more interested in what you're doing. Um, so there are, it just depends on how, the devil's in the details. It's all yeah. how you do what right. you do sometimes. I mean, like the, the skill there is how to steal a show, and that's a topic for another time. Yeah, well, we can get into um, that. Yeah. Can, but I put down so far in our notes is um, let people pay, perceived value, what are people willing to pay and able to pay, don't be too cheap, um, mm-hmm. make them feel like they're part of something bigger than themselves, world building uh, with uh, Leah mm-hmm. in mind there. And then playing live is still sometimes um, the best way. Um how do you not be too cheap? Well, first of I, all, we didn't really get goods. into that. We kind of glossed over that. Well, first of all, you deliver the, you deliver quality, and you don't skim. Now, this is the, this is the problem, right? Uh, and th- this is one area where it can be awkward starting out. Like when you start getting your CDs, and there's a lot we can do on print on demand. Um, there are dangers there because there's things you're not in control of if you just use print on demand and drop shipping. Um, one of the things you lose control of if you rely on drop shipping is you cannot personalize the package. 
And that is such an important thing to do. Um, what I've been doing with the jewellery business lately is really going to town with uh, making the package that comes through the post um, uh, a valuable thing to have. This is why this is why inboxing videos are a thing, because people like to get the package through the mail and open it up, and um, the actual thing that they bought, well, that's a given. They ordered it. They know they're getting that, but the actual experience of getting it and finding other stuff there, then, that it's attractively packaged that there's um, a good graphic in there. There might be extra little gifts in there. Like um, something we do is like um, get a pack of sweets. We try and make them vegan sweets so nobody can have a problem with it. <laughs> um, little the vegan sweets or herbal tea bags, something that's going to also appeal to the people you're selling to. And they love finding shit like that because it's um, something extra there. Yeah. We even had somebody sort of like fed, fed back <laughs> saying that um, I haven't even looked at the thing I bought yet because I'm just going through the other stuff. And the other stuff is like maybe and this is another thing. Um, this candy that we put in there, uh, it's something you might not think about. But when we put something like it, if we put something in a parcel here and send it to New York, it's going to be it's not going to be the same candy that they go out and buy in a store yeah. there. So immediately we put, we're um, yeah. it's an international Fine. thing. Yeah, well, I, um, <clears throat> I brought I when I was I went to Austria in the early 2000s and um, I brought back these candies that like they were just oh my god they were like mm. drugs, um, but <laughs> <laughs> um, that is a great you brought up the idea of the the, the uh, you uh, unboxing these unboxing videos and mm. that is something if you watch I I don't that isn't typically a, a niche I really like a lot of, but the ones that I have seen, that is something that like you get a lot, you, the, a lot mm -hmm. of the uh, people who are making the videos do a lot of oohs and ahs over like, Oh, I got check out this cool <laughs> thing. Oh my God. They give you this very cool sticker or they's like, mm -hmm. Oh, they, you know, they include the cables to plug the mm -hmm. pedal in or, you know, Hey, they, you know, I got a free t-shirt with uh, this guitar that I bought from Gibson mm -hmm. or whatever. Um, <clears throat> and that goes like a long yeah. way and they'll spend and the point is that the video experience about right away now is something that people know that they pay for and get yeah you're giving and, them an experience just by opening this, something in the mail they get an experience yeah and that's why as well you can also justify your products as um an independent trader being more expensive than what they do if they got out and went out and got it in walmart that's because good. like if you go to walmart it'll be mass produced it will be, it will have um, jumped through whatever hoops it has to, but ultimately it will be a piece of mass produced tat with nothing personal about it. Whereas if you buy something that somebody's handmade that's roughly equivalent, there'll be a bit more personal love into it, a bit more of an experience. And when they mail it to you, you'll feel like they give a shit. And that is something that's really valuable for people the idea that somebody actually gives a shit about what they're selling. Yeah, I mean, um, something for like, so it would be my niche would be like, when I sent out the CD, I could include some guitar picks and mm. different things like that. You know, just little stuff like that that you could add in uh, mm. that would make it like, oh, this is really cool. And, and and a lot of people collect guitar picks. They don't even play. It's just a, it's a collectible. Mm. Even the CD itself, um, um, like the cheapest way to get CDs now is Kunaki. So we use them because it's completely automated. However, I'm tending to think now that the Kanaki CD as it comes, while it's perfectly all right for certain things, it's in a it's in a dual case and it's got a single label and it's got a barcode, so it's a bare it's a it's a bare bones package and we treat it that right. way. However, the next time I order from Kanaki, I'm going to get a cake of them and I get my packaging elsewhere for it because that's all right and it's the bare thing you'd want with there, but it's not a desirable item. It's a basic CD. So if you can package that CD in something else there, even if you get the, um, like most CDs that I see now, most plastic jewel cases, they're sort of there, but no one really likes them. Most most um, band CDs that I see these days are in um, are in the cardboard jewel cases, which they won't give you. You have to get those made specially. If you go out and get them printed in another shop, they'll do them for you. And even though people always said they don't like the booklets that you open the, and their lyrics are too small and it won't go back in there, if you, if that document actually feels like something that's attractive and something that's positive to own. So this is the thing. CDs aren't the base way of owning music now. Um, right. Stream is. Yeah. Spotify, all that. And you can <clears throat> whinge and complain till the cows come home about that. Well, the, but where, the, the, where record shops are making a, a comeback now is the fact that you come away with a physical item that you want to own. 
I mean, you want to have on your shelf that you can point out to people. Yeah, and that's where it comes in having really a good, really good artwork. And mm -hmm. if you're going to give them the lyrics, I mean, I, what, we don't, she's not on the call. She hasn't been on a call in a long time. But I, Melissa um, was working on a thing where she was combining lyrics like in a book with like artwork. So, I mean, it was like a book, like a book book. And she would she was combining this with like some really beautiful artwork. And it was like bound with um, um, twine or something. It was really just yeah. for her niche. It was like the kind of thing that they would just eat up. You could just tell. So things like that, you could even <clears throat> create. I, I, I had a guy on my podcast who actually wrote a novel. And each for each chapter, he had a song. And so you bought you. You had to, it was how you looked at it. Were you buying the book or were you buying the CD? Did the CD come with the book or did the book come? It was just all depending on your perception mm -hmm. of it. But it was this package with the book the, and the, the CD was the soundtrack to the novel. And it wasn't real long. You know, it was digestible. Um, and so it's, there's a lot of ways to create something that's going to be like a kind of ex, you know, a whole experience. Then and, and, a, and, yeah. a, and a short novel that if you can write a compelling story is a way to kind of bring people mm -hmm. in uh, to what you're doing. I mean, <clears throat> Raven Black, they sell a graphic novel. They have a graphic novel. Kiss had the Kiss uh, comic book. Um, so it's not like a new idea, but the, there is mm -hmm. a it can be done now by indie bands is why I guess is the yeah. point I'm making. Like think that way. Think like we want to be thinking yeah. like, See, you know, and more I, stuff. I think the thing I heard you both say though, is whether you're following a band going out and touring with them and going to get that experience by going out to the club and being with them or you're buying their CD, it really comes down to an experience. So you want to make sure that you're, if you're not like, you know, traveling and everything that you turn your music, that you turn your product into an experience that mm -hmm. someone's going to want to purchase. So, you know, and coming back to Leah, that's what she's done. She's mm -hmm. made her music into an experience and coming to what you guys are saying here, you know, it's all about creating an experience for your audience that they're going to really dig, like, and appreciate. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, yeah, to, um, totally about that. So I forgot the point I was going to make now. Yeah, totally about that. <laughs> so, so, yeah, that experience and that product. I and mean, then um, there's another thing about sort of thinking holistically here. Um, I think sometimes musicians can be guilty, and I say this having gone through music education as an educator as well. Sometimes music gets sort of shoved off to the side, and musicians are often guilty of shoving themselves off to the side as well. So that I'm making music, that's what I do. I'm more interested in the and sometimes that's why you get into music because like you it's the only place you sort of feel you really fit there in it I think there's some people who do art the same way but these things work best when you start looking at the other you mentioned at the outset of this that you deal with creatives you mm -hmm. use the words creatives and you said about artists writers all these other people who do those together mm -hmm. and um, I think sometimes we're at our best when you deal with people who are creatives in other areas, I mean, not just about hiring someone to do your cover art, but actually having a conversation about what you're doing creatively, the saying that this happens to be my medium, but ultimately we're all doing the same thing. We are, we are uh, generating uh, an experience based on something we have to say, and we're finding the people who also have that thing that they want to have said. Yeah, so so I mean, I've, I've, I've some, something I've been playing around with lately. I'm, I'm, it's still, I'm still building up notes on it, so I don't want to tip my hand too much. But I've, I've got, I've got a whole page in my notebook now, and at the top of it, it says Sonic Comic. So okay. I've realised a lot of the songs that I'm writing these days tend to be about characters and stories, and the storytelling is one of the things that's really resonating with what I'm putting out at the moment nice. more than when I do anything more personal. And when I do something more personal, it tends to be sort of commentary on the stories anyway. And um, I'm thinking what else is like this. And I've realized it's comic books, um, particularly the ones that are like uh, a compendium of different characters. So, um, here's, um, so here's, the, here's um, the Adventures of Dan Dare, and it's going to be followed now by a story of um, Iron Man. And so uh, and, and each part will be encapsulated and will take you on a journey there and then, and then move it around. And I think, what if I can sort of make albums or EPs that are like that? 
that take you through this cast of characters and stories and have an underlying message, an underlying aesthetic running through it. And then I, the artist, rather than it all being about me, the superstar artist, fall at my feet. So I hate that, that. That's not me. I can't fill, I can't fill that role. Um, I, I am anti-celebrity. I have no interest in being a celebrity. But as an, what I can be is the guide to the, all of these stories that are coming through there. So I can be an author. Hmm. So could I be more of an author than... And so when I, and then when I perform, I'm really just like um, the vehicle through which these stories come out. And that's where I'm starting thinking in terms of the Sonic comic. As I say, how can I make the music I produce more like what would happen when you go out and buy um, a Neil Gaiman comic? Yeah, that's cool. Because then what, you could do all kinds of things with that. You could, um, mm. you could actually have your case have the comic like it's not really mm. a case but make it be a booklet with the comic mm. in it and in the back put the cd and that would be all your music yeah and eventually that could become a lot it could become animations mm. it could be a lot of things yeah there's sure. a lot of possibility there and it's just making sure that i can actually do it i mean the other problem with that is i can't draw for shit so i've got to um so uh, i either work with somebody to do that side of it or i build up just enough to hint at it and say that look the, the music is the medium here and everything else is in support of music, but I am trying to work with it. It's, it's, it's the difference between the concept and the product. I, I think yeah, you, you could easily just like finding um, mm. a producer to work with you on your music or finding band members to play. I think that you could find somebody, an artist out there who could get totally excited about this and who would be like, look, is looking for a project, looking for a way to kind of, <clears throat> break in themselves somebody who's t you know and there's it's, it's just like just like us there's tons of talented musicians out there that you know would are trying to get get in somehow and there's so there's tons of talented artists authors designers out there that are looking for a way to uh carve out a name for themselves and sometimes there's strength in numbers so if you could put together a you know uh a band if you will of somebody to who's an awesome artist, you know, you're the music person and then maybe somebody to write the dialogue. So, uh, you know, so you have like a little team. We almost like, it's almost like a band. Yeah, so, I mean, it wouldn't be, it, so, you know, you'd have to find the right people, but we even, we live in a global uh, village. So, you know, you might work with some, so you might work with somebody in America and somebody in Brazil and somebody in Japan and, and put in, put, put the whole thing together. I mean, it's completely coming. Cool. I mean, yeah. that's just, ties into another research project that I've sort of um, got ongoing at the moment. It occurred to me when I was sort of like looking back at some, some bands, uh, and I remember this, and, and there was a sort of period in the late 80s, and it sort of ended up with where, there were, where suddenly claymation became a real big thing in music videos. Tool. And most famously, it was bands like Green, um, Green Jelly Tool. did these um, plasticine animation videos. Right. And I was thinking, so, so then I was thinking, was it the same people making these? Um, one of the things I found out, which is actually devilishly hard to find um, production credits for most of these videos, one of them being, because quite often they would use students. Um, and I do, I do recognise little stylistic things running through these, so I'll bet that the same people ended up doing it. They just weren't credited. I know there's people like Fred Sturr, who, who, um, who um, was named director, and the people he worked with. Um, and I think a lot of them would, then would have sort of gone on to things like Adult Swim and what then became the adult animation boom of the 90s. So um, Thomas Truax is a musician who I know started out as an animator. Um, I don't know if he ever did music videos when he started out. Well, let's let's take let's kind of rein it in a little bit. Let's, let's talk. Let's kind of uh, summarize where, where, what we're talking about here, which is. Uh, you know, we're going from free to getting money. And the idea is mm. to let people pay, give a lot of extras, make it personal. Don't be cheap, skimpy, you know, don't do everything with print on demand. Be creative, come up with ways of maybe combining other um, creative things like authors uh, uh, artists and bring you know cre creating something um you know more holistic i think carrie used the word holistic also one of the things leah does not do but we we've talked about many times is there is a still uh, a need to play live 
Mm-hmm. Uh, people do. There are there are those people that love to go to live shows. I run into them all the time. They love live music, so that's sometimes still the best way. So these are a whole list of ways. What I want to do is because we're we're, we're kind of going long today. I want to kind of go around the room and get some like summarizing or parting kind of ideas here. Mm-hmm. So 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 Carrie, you've been talking for a while. The Joe, what, what's uh, what's on your mind? How do you where? What are your thoughts on this? The only thing I can do is compare it to like working with authors. Um, you know, so when an author is putting out a book, they release little pieces of the book throughout the social media process of getting people interested in the book. They do um, maybe a podcast, maybe an interview, maybe a, um, you know, different things to get people interested in the book. Then they sell the book for a low price and they always have something on the back end that is raising the value that they're going to sell that's really going to make their money, right? Because a lot of times the book may generate a little bit of income for them, but it's a loss leader, which means that they're interested in getting that person on their email list so that they can then sell to them later. Whenever they have another book coming out, maybe they have volume two, they have um, a training that they're doing, they have a course, um, they're going to go speak somewhere. They're looking at getting, getting mm-hmm. speak engagements, call, consulting engagements, um, something like that. And then, and that's where they're making their true money. So they have a starting place and an end goal as far as, you know, not only the experience and value they're given to their customer, but the, um, way that they're making their money, because let's face it, money, we need it. It, it pays our bills. Um, so for a musician, you know, maybe it's playing little parts of a song. Maybe it's going out and doing shows. Maybe, you know, in the beginning, if you're not making a lot of money doing that, that's your loss leader to get people interested in your music. Um, but you don't want to give them everything. Yeah. You I do want to build an experience, but you don't want to give them everything. Yeah. So when you release the full CD, <laughs> You know what I mean? That has to have something in it that you haven't shared in its entirety, especially in one place as a collection. It has to have something in it that is exclusive. Mm. You know, like when I was talking about authors, you know, there could be exclusive interviews, trainings, whatever. So for musicians, maybe, you know, like Carrie was saying, a comic book that you're not going to get elsewhere Mm. elsewhere. Um, so just think about that, I guess, experience, like starting point of what, what, what am I going to share and what's going to be the exclusive content as time goes out to raise the value? Mm. Um, what kind of experience are you giving your audience? What does that look like? Um, that kind of thing. And then Carrie, my last thought, um, is that if you're going to do a comic book for your music, I wouldn't write a comic book tomorrow. I wouldn't go out and commission an artist to create an entire comic book and like wait six months to a year, drop it in front of your audience and say, Hey, here's my comic book with my new CD. Bye. (laughs) You don't know if they're interested in that. You have no clue. So like getting that artist to make, um, little promo videos, little, like little pieces of content with little pieces of your music, that's going to capture that audience's attention it's going to be sure they're interested in it at all we're talking music videos especially for this yeah that's going to so be yeah that's my real value i could give there and i'm going to pass that over to carrie now <laughs> carrie, this is your this is your final thoughts because we got yeah the other thing you mentioned there as well you talked about services and that's gonna be a big thing certainly um what we pass on in terms of articles um training whatever we give on um, and this also comes back to what we started out with is what don't you give away for free? Well, one of them is um, when somebody approaches you and asks you to do something. Um, there's, a, there's something else we have here in England called the Yorkshire Creed. And the Yorkshire Creed is if thou does out for now, always do it for the sin. And what that means is um, if, you're giving, um, if somebody asks you to do something for free, then you'd better be getting something else out of it. And you better be doing it fundamentally for yourself. Um, so it might be something that I will do. And there's a lot of things I'll do on a voluntary basis because it's something I want to support and because it leads to other things. But if somebody comes to me and says, can you do this or um, play this show or do that because it will be good exposure for you? 
that's not good enough. If they came to me and asked me to do a job for them, that is something I will charge for. If it's something where I went to them and I've sort of said, let's make a deal, then fair enough. I might end up doing it for something else. But if they've come to me, never. Um, the, only, the only exception there is if it's something that I already support and, all, and already wanted to be a part of because then you would get something else. Well, that's yeah. right. You're getting something else out of it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and some, some the other things you can get out of it, um, <clears throat> you know, there are times when there is a such thing as getting exposure, but you have to be able to leverage that mm. exposure. So we could do another, uh, we could do, a, we could do an entire uh, call on, on, on that, but get something out of it. Is this going to grow your mailing list? Are they going to mm. put you in their marketing? That's going to reach a whole bunch of other people that maybe you've been trying to reach for a long time and you can't, but because you're going to be part of this thing, this is going to, you know, intro be, be able to introduce them to you in a in you you to them in an in a meaningful way so you want to get something meaningful mm. out of it something that you can go like aha after <laughs> i did this record i ended up with uh 500 more people on my mailing list mm. after i you know uh you know played this show uh it you know with such and such band we got uh you know we sold you know five hundred dollars worth of merchandise or or whatever so there has to be and and sometimes you've got to look for those things sometimes it isn't like boom you know like right in front of you sometimes it isn't like you know you know we want you to come play this thing we're going to pay you a thousand dollars sometimes you have to before you say yes or no you have to think a little bit like what you know okay well there really isn't any money here but what is there an opportunity for me to really leverage this and how would I do it? And so you walk into that situation with whatever you're going to do set up, whether it's you're playing a show and you've got like people dressed in costumes going around throughout the audience, you know, uh, getting people on your mailing list or getting them to buy something really small or, 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 or something like that. I mean, you have to kind of like make sure, you know, it's like Joe, this is something that Joe is familiar with because he works with, he's been in a lot of marketing stuff. It's the s selling from the stage, right, Joe? You know, you go yeah. to give a talk, am I allowed to sell from the stage? So if I'm not, right. how do I, what do I do to kind of make this not a total <clears throat> waste of time? I went, I drove to this place, I'm going to stand up and speak. How do I leverage that? you know, to get mm -hmm. people either on my mailing list or get them to buy something or, or, or get them. Yeah, to become always a have a merch table. Yeah. The number of bands I know who sh who set out and do gigs and especially if they go out for less money and then have nothing to sell. Yeah. You, you want uh, to have Apart that. from the fact that there's, there's so much, so much wrong with that. And one of them is you're only doing half the job. If you've rocked an audience and left them with no souvenirs, not only have you not got more money out of them, you've left, you've left them with the opportunity to forget you. Yeah. Yep, there Whereas, they, yeah. if, at that moment, when they think you're the best thing ever, they want they they not only should go home with some kind of souvenir, they want to. <laughs> yeah, you right. should have they a souvenir table. table and see that there's some um, things that they can take home. So, like, if I go out and play live, I make damn sure that I've got a decent merch table with me. Okay. I definitely have someone with you whose job it is to run it. Awesome, guys! That was a, it. Was a great talk. We covered um, a lot of different ways that you can go from free to money um and there's some there's some nuances to this you know really pay attention to some of the things we talked about here like not skimping delivering quality giving personalized stuff because mm -hmm. what's happening is everybody is doing a free download everybody is like you know has a cd or you know uh you know or, or whatever what do you have that creates a personal experience and starts to build a personal relationship uh, with those fans, which brings them into your world on a deeper way. Uh, people are used, people are like, they get, people get like used to and um, uh, immune to marketing. They get immune to different products. They get, they're like, they're being bombarded constantly. So how do you leave them with the feeling of, oh, wow, this is really cool. This is really different. Go back. If you if you watch unboxing videos and things like that, this will give you some ideas. We gave you a whole bunch uh, in today's uh, in today's talk as well. We'll be back next week. Uh, my th special thanks to Joe Freeman for uh, for joining us today. Um, Joe, what is your um, where can people reach out to you? What's what's the best way to get a hold of you? Yeah. So the best way to get a hold of me is um, through orange tree marketing dot com. 
Um, you just go there and you, there's a spot down there where you can say contact. So you don't have to buy anything. Um, I'm revising that right now. So yeah, just go there and you can get a hold of me. And Carrie, uh, any, uh, you want to plug your website or anything before uh, we go? KJKmusic.co.uk will link you to everything else I do. Excellent. Uh, you've been listening to Ludini Rock and Roll Circus Musicians Mastermind Call. Um, go to LudiniRockAndRollCircus.com to get more information. Guys, uh, appreciate the uh, for hanging out today, and we'll catch you guys all in the next Ludini Rock and Roll Circus. Thank you.